Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Hello, boys and girls. This is Ranger Bill. Have you ever stopped for a railroad crossing when the gates were down and waited for the train to show up, and then all of a sudden along comes a hand car putt-putting away? <laughs> it's rather a letdown to what was expected, isn't it? But nevertheless, the little vehicles save many hours when the section hands want to travel short distances. In our story today, the rangers and I get involved with one of these contraptions that we've been talking about, they come in mighty handy, especially when you need them. No, I'm not going to tell you any more about the story. You'll just have to listen to The Handcar Race. This is the railroad dispatcher's office at Junction City, the nerve center of the railroad for quite an area around, even as far north as Canyon City. Wilson McFadden, who's been nicknamed Unc, and his staff of highly trained men keep the trains rolling. And it's also their job to smell trouble and do everything possible to avoid it. Let's get a little inside view of Unc and his boys hard at work. Hey, Unc, here's trouble. Uh, let me see the teletype. Roy, get me the station agent at Naughty Pine. Right away. Here, I thought we were getting a nice spring rain, and now we find out it's storming cats and dogs at Naughty Pine. Mm, and don't tell me there's poodles of water all over the place, or I'll throw you out the window. <laughs> okay, I'll save the coin. Pick up the phone. How are things up your way? Pretty nasty, dispatcher. We're getting cloudburst after cloudburst, and it looks like there's plenty left. Mm, okay, thanks for keeping us informed. Goodbye. You think they'll have flash floods up there? I'd say there's a good possibility. Al, reroute the Fireball Express at Centerville. Put them on the southern route. It's too late. She's left Centerville. Ah, uh, how about the freight route? No good, Jim. Stockman Special just pulled onto the freight line. They'll be dropping cars at every rancher's siding for the next day. Yeah, and we don't have a bypass siding long enough to take the cattle train till they cut out about 40 cars. Boy, get me the engineer on the Fireball. Right on. Sienna Limited's pulling out in three minutes. Which route? Over the high country. Be two hours late. That's better than ending up in the bottom of a canyon. Send her over the mountain. Okay. Jim, tell Carl and Pierce to get an engine and caboose and run up to Canyon City. I want all those trestles watched. I'm going to try and send the Fireball Express through on time and in one piece. <laughs> Ready to be a guinea pig, Pierce? Yep. Uh, we can always jump if there's a washout. Sure. That's why I picked the oldest iron horse we got. If we lose this one in the canyon, it won't mean much. You're right. Boy, I'd hate to be an ox shoes if he misses on this one. That fireball's got 400 aboard. Well, well he ain't missed yet, but well, I guess there's always a first time for everything. Like you say, I'd hate to be in his shoes if he makes a mistake. Oh, well, Unc's been in this game a long time. I think he can smell a busted trestle a hundred miles away. <laughs> I hope so. Well, Otto and Keith are aboard the caboose. We'll shove off. Right. Full steam ahead and don't spare the horses. stopping here. Why, uh, we're too far ahead of the fireball. We gotta kill some time. Okay. 
What do you say we kill it back in the caboose with a coffee pot? Yeah, suits me fine. Let's go. And don't get wet on the way back. I'll run between the drops like a sidewinder. Well, look what we have here, Keith. Can't say as a recognize him. Well, me neither. They look like a couple of wet hens coming in to get dried <laughs> up. Uh, should we throw them outside and see how dry they can stay, Carl? <laughs> no. Wait till we come to a canyon full of water. They'll get soaked better that way. Uh, how's the coffee out there? <laughs> right tolerable. Help yourself. Uh, I will. Uh. Here, let me fill your cup with this varnish, Pierce. Thanks. Don't drop any on the floor. It'll probably eat a hole right through the boards. <laughs> Say, how long's it been since you fellas put new beans in the pot? <laughs> what are you hollering about? They're only a day or two old. We always change them once a month, whether they need it or not. Sure, <laughs> far be it from us to waste the company's money. Imagine, Otto, how much it would cost if we put fresh beans in every day. <laughs> Why, the superintendent would put fresh beans in your head if he tasted this stuff. But this is the kind of day when anything hot goes good. Say, Carl, how come you stopped here? Well, why, we're too far ahead of the fireball. This is flash flood country up here, you know. Hmm. Now I know why they always put you on the job of testing trestles. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, we could go along testing trestles and be too far ahead of the express. And then if a flash flood occurred after we passed the trestle and before the fireball crossed it, man, what a mess that would be. You sure know your stuff, Carl. Uh, it's just that I'm such a moly old codger that I've lived long enough to learn all the tricks of the game. This is rugged country up here, and many an inexperienced man's been caught short. If you don't believe me, talk to a ranger sometime. I can believe it. Every time we go over those trestles, I get the shivers. Yeah, it's a long way to the bottom. Yeah, it sure is. One good flash flood carrying the right size boulders could powder a trestle and nothing flat. Well, we better get going. The old fireball will catch up to us if we don't. A straight run to Junction City. Move. Yeah, we ought to be able to pick up five minutes. Ought to, man. We will, and then some. Full throttle, and we'll do 95. Judd, the signal's flashing on the radio telephone. Oh, I get it. It's probably the dispatcher at Junction City. I hope he doesn't give us a take it easy notice. We'll soon find out. Hello, Judd speaking. Judd, this is Unc. Hello, Unc. What's up? Is it raining down your way? No, we're under clouds, but no rain so far. Why? Make up as much extra time as you can. When you pull into Junction City, see me personally, and I'll give you orders. Okay, but what's going on up there? There's a bad storm at Knotty Pine. It isn't a trestle buster, is it? I hope not. We'll know more about that by the time you get here. See you then. Okay. What's wrong ahead, Judd? Storm at Knotty Pine. It must be a real humdinger for Unc to make a special fuss over it. Yeah, and how? Pull all the stops, James. We're going to notch this speedometer close to 100. There's the cabin ahead, fellas. We'll put the horses on the lee side to give them some protection. Uh, that's a good idea. Even raincoat not help in this one. Whoa, Storm. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, girl. Oh. Easy going. Boy, let's get inside, but quick. Henry, you go in and start a fire. I'll pull your saddle and blanket. Yes, sir. On the double. I'm just not cut out to be a duck. Well, 
Well, it sounds like the boom boom from the heavens is about ready to quit. Yeah, but listen to the rain. Wow. And there's plenty heavy downpour. Maybe more water than we need. It's beginning to look that way, Grey Wolf. I hope the railroad boys are out testing trestles, just in case there's a flash flood. Hey, we're not far from the mainline track, are we? No. I almost reach out and touch it from the cabin window. Ah. <laughs> this is a good night to be home. <laughs> It sure is, Sonny. It ain't fit for man or beast outside, no siree. The only trouble with this is there's nothing to do. Huh? Who said there ain't? I did. Why? You got your New Testament with you, ain't you? Certainly. I intend to get a lot of reading done this evening. But it's still early. How about playing a game of Scrabble? <laughs> That's a great idea. Who's got a Scrabble game with them? <laughs> Henry, you know better than to ask a foolish question like that. <laughs> Nobody carries Scrabble game in pack, Henry. <laughs> I didn't think anybody would. We've got enough to carry as it is. Well, now, I think the feller who wouldn't carry a Scrabble game might be a little touched in the head. <laughs> We're all touched, old-timer. None of us has one in his knapsack. Huh? Well, now, I don't allow us how that's true, Sonny. How do you know none of us has one? Well... <laughs> <laughs> you got me on that one. I don't really know. I'm just assuming. <laughs> okay, Stumpy. You can get the Scrabble game out of your pack and we'll play what? it. He's got one? <laughs> I sure have, Sonny. I'd get it out, but I don't think any of you fellas can spell worth the hoot. Oh, I suppose you won all the spelling bees when you were in school? Yep, I sure did. You want to challenge me? <laughs> sure I do. Get the game out. Well, so far, so good, huh, Carl? Well, but now we're getting to the high trestles, Pierce. And not that the damage would be small if one of the lower trestles went out. How far down to the bottom are some of the canyons ahead? Oh, three, four, five hundred feet. There's one way up ahead there that's eight hundred feet deep. There's a ranger's cabin right close by. That's how I landmark the deep one. Eight hundred feet deep? Wow. Oh, well, we'd better look that one over carefully. <laughs> yeah. I give the passengers parachutes before the fireball crosses it. Well, why don't you give it more gas? We'll never make it up this great if you don't. Well, as long as you keep throwing coal in the firebox and we keep getting steam, we won't have a bit of trouble getting up this grade. Carl, why are you stalling? Something's on your mind and you're keeping it to yourself. Well, it's the big trestle, son, the one over Cougar Canyon. That thing's been up there since Hector was a pop. Well, shouldn't that be proof enough that it's sound? Yeah, perhaps it should, but I'm dragging my heels just the same. I don't want too much time to lag from the time we cross it until the fireball comes along. Uh, how are we going to get out of the way of that fast job? Well, that is a short bypass siding about five miles to the side of the canyon. We'll pull off on it and stand till the express goes by. Remember, Pierce, 400 lives depend on us making sure that trestle will be there when the train gets to it. Yeah, I know. We're just a couple of guys plunking along in an old engine in a rainstorm. Not very many people know we're here. But if we goof this one up, the whole world will know about it. Listen here, you scrabble hound. Let's call it a draw. It's getting late. <laughs> okay, bro. What do you say, Stumpy? Yeah, I think so, too. <sighs> hey, huh? there must be something wrong with that engine. It's sure going slowly. That's a trestle testing crew, pal. A uh, how? Come again? I said that's a trestle testing crew. Oh, oh, trestle testers. <laughs> I thought you said wrestle testers. Huh? <laughs> Henry, I don't think you have too much scrabble, Henry. You punch you from trying to think up and spell words. <laughs> wrestle testers. Where'd you get that one, pal? <laughs> oh, I just thunk it up. Well, let's have our devotions and turn in. We gotta be on our way up the trail first thing in the morning. The 
big trestles right ahead. You said it. We'll know in a short while if it's going to hold or not. So far, we're all right. Uh, I don't see much water in the bottom of the canyon. We shouldn't have any problem then? No, I guess not. <laughs> we're over. And the old trestle didn't even sway. Oh, I feel better now. Oh, so do I. That old fireball's going to be safe and sound as she snorts over this wood pile a mile a minute or better. Yep. Well, we'd better head for the side and get out of the way. Oh, I sure wish we could go back and stay in a ranger cabin. This cab leaves worse than a paper bag full of holes. <laughs> yeah, we'll be able to go back to Junction City in a couple of hours. As soon as the fireball zips by, I'll put this old relic back on the main track and give her a full throttle. <laughs> What's the matter, Carl? You're jumping? Yeah, you've been listening to that thunder and jumping with every crash. I, I don't like it. Why? It's only another squall line moving in. That's the whole idea. Another squall line means more cloud bursts. And that means more water in, in tremendous quantities. Oh, what's the difference? The trestle's sound as a rock. We just tested it. You've had that thing in your mind for hours, Carl. How come? I told you how come. That's an old trestle. It worries me. Oh, take it easy. We've done our job now. Let's relax until the express goes by. Then we can head for home. Sure. Don't worry about that pile of lumber. It'll stand. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. We're going back down there and make sure. Oh, oh no. come on. Oh, yes, I, I okay. want to satisfy myself that everything's all right. Well, we might get clobbered by the fireball. Yeah, yeah, now, now, here. now don't talk foolishly. We'll be back up here on the side in plenty of time. Let's go, and that's final. <laughs> God, it looks like a flash floods at the canyon. Look at the water. Man alive, I'll say there's water. Now I'm glad we listened to you, Carl. I wonder if the trestle footings are okay now. I don't know. We'll have to stay here and watch it for a while. Did you hear that? Yeah, the trestle's weak. How are we going to know if it'll hold the fireball? Well, we'll back this old crate out onto it. How will we get across if it goes down? Who won't be anybody to stop the express. Well, if the trestle collapses, the rangers will hear the racket and they'll know something's wrong. I'll be glad to go across to the other side on foot and get help from the rangers' cabin. Well, there ain't time. You'd eat up all the valuable time left just walking across the trestle. Oh, what a mess. Oh, if we had listened to you, Carl, instead of arguing, we'd have time to get across. Well, let's not waste time being sorry. I'm going to release the brake and let the rig roll back onto the trestle. You fellas stand clear now. Make sure you don't get taken along, Carl. Well, don't worry. I don't have any intention of going down with my ship. You fellas ready for the lights out? Yep. I just finished the Gospel of John. Oh, what a wonderful book. I'm through, Sonny. I'm about halfway through the Song of Solomon. Oh, you can put light out now, Bill. Okay, here goes. Good night, fellas. What's that? Sunlight What's crash. happened? It's been a train wreck. Grab the boat lights. Let's go. What's the word, Unc? Can we take off with the fireball? Well, Judd, in this case, I'd have to say no news is good news. The trestle testers haven't reported anything wrong. I uh, haven't heard a word. If there are any out, they would have been back here by now to tell me. Well, I guess I'd better get the fireball rolling. Right. Keep your ears open for dynamite caps on the track. 
Although the boys would put flares out if there's trouble. Well, I'll keep awake, all right. We've got a full load and quite a few important people aboard. See you later, Unc. Okay. Keep your eye on the radio telephone light in case I have to call you in a hurry. Yes, sir. I'll do that. Al, give the fireball a green light. She's going out on schedule. Jumping catfish. The trestle's gone. And how it's gone. And so's an engine in the caboose. They're smashed to bits down there. That's plenty bad. I wonder if crew on train, when it go down... That's hard to say. If they were, it won't make any difference now. Between the crash and the explosion, they didn't have a chance of getting out alive. Hey! Shine your lights across the canyon. I hear voices. There. A train crew. Four men. How'd they ever get over there, safe and sound? What are they doing? Looks like they want us to go back. I got it. They want us to go back down the track. The Fireball Express is due along here any time now. (laughs) You must be joking, Sonny. No, I'm not. I don't know how soon it's due, but it'll be along. Just as sure as I'm knee-high to a toadstool. We do something quick, Bill. There's got to be a section hand car along here someplace. Let's start back down the track on the double. Look for a little shed where they keep the hand car. On the double, men. I've worked, Carl. They're going down the track on the run. Boy, what a relief. I hope they get far enough. That fireball takes about two miles to stop when it's going full blast. It's a sharp upgrade to the trestle. That'll help. Yes, thank the good Lord for them rangers. They've averted a terrible tragedy. Uh, I I can't see their lights anymore. Well, I sure hope they make it in time. Uh, You know, fellas, we could be praying instead of talking. My heart gets pains when I think of that trainload of passengers. Sure good to know that everything's all right up ahead, eh, Judd? Yes, sir. Those engine's powerful. Not enough to jump across canyons, though. Oh, it gives me the shivers just to think about it. Don't get jumping now, son. The crew that tests these bridges is made up of old-time railroad men. They can smell a bad trestle a mile off. Oh, I'll be all right, Judd. Especially after we get across the Cougar Canyon trestle. After that, we won't have a thing to worry about. There's a hand car shed. Oh, oh boy, good, am I glad we found one. Stumpy, stay out here on the track with your light. We'll get the hand car. Right! All right, stand back while I shoot the lock off. Okay. There. Good. Now, get off. swing those doors out. All right. Let's get it on the track. That's it. Oh, lift, now, lift. Now, now, lift it. That's it, lift it, fellas. Heavy. That's it. Okay, right here. Drop her. She's on square. All right, get on. I'll start the engine. Throw your light over here, pal. How's that? That's fine. It must be wet. Run. All the fool cries for the thing not to work. Maybe we'd better run down the track and leave you to start it, Sonny. Sit tight. Till I give it one more whirl. Hurry, Bill! That's express coming now. Hold your light closer. Please come. I think this lever right here should be up instead of down. Bill! Did you hear what I said? Yes, pal, I did. All right, now we'll try it again. Go. Come on. Come on. Over. Come on. Let her go. Here we go! The lock horns with the Fireball Express! Well, 
Well, we've only got three miles till we'll cross the big trestle, and then you can relax, Emo boy. Yeah, I'll be glad to. Hey, what are those lights what? on the track? Lights? Hey, there's four of them. Those are men in the hand car. Four men? There are four men in the trestle testing crew. Don't get excited, son. We have plenty of time to stop. Right I know, away. I know, but you'll hit the hand car. Sure, I can't stop any sooner without hurting the passengers. The boys will have to jump. See us yet? We'd better jump. Not yet, pal. Just wait till we slow down. Still got a couple of seconds. And I think they see us, Bill. Shine your lights in the engineer's eyes for a second. You'll see us then. He can't stop. He's short. Get ready to jump. Gentlemen, I have asked you into my office to bestow honor upon you. Honor for your acts of courage that exceeded all expectations. Bill Jefferson, we're putting a new streamliner on this railroad in six months, and we're going to call it the Ranger in honor of you and your men. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll be pleased to accept this honor, providing the men who are employees of your railroad receive their share of praise and credit. Well, the employees involved have already received bonus checks and promotions for their part. Tell me, Bill, what compelled you and your rangers to ride that high-end car into the path of the Fireball Express? Surely you were aware that you could have been killed. Yes, sir, we were aware of that. But we weighed the value. Four against 400. There was only one decision to make. No alternatives. That's right, Mr. President. We lost the hand car, but we won the race. Well, we almost lost more than the hand car, old timer. Especially if we'd misjudged the speed of the express. Well, it's an old saying that all's well that ends well. In this case, it's true. See you next week for more adventures with... Thank you.